each of those tiny screws was locked in with a little touch of clear lacquer. And to do a favour to the next poor bugger that comes in here to service this, I'm going to use red lacquer so that it's clear that I've been there. Clear lacquer you'd normally use for locking things that are going to be seen by members of the public. Use a dark lacquer or something eye-catching like red anywhere where you're locking a screw that will only be seen by the uh, next repairer. Because it makes life easier for them if they can see it coming and they'll know to put a some acetone or something there in order to uh, remove it. Right, I'll put this in place on the body. Now there were two shims here. Let's give that mirror one last puff. There are a few specks on that mirror but I'm not touching that. That prism's dropping down into place. And I'll get its three screws put in place. That's a good sign. It's a good sign if the shutter fires and works correctly once the prism is back in place. If you made a mess of something, sometimes the prism will hit the arm on the back of the shutter and it doesn't work correctly. But that's all good. That camera could have the meter put back into it now. We set that at B, set that at F1.9 and put the meter in. Alright, with the camera set to B and F1.9 you can see that cutout's facing to the front. This meter should go on here this way. Hang on, get that screw out from there. Let's make sure that's cocked. Remove that screw. Something sticky there, that might interfere with my meter needle. Let me remove that, that's better. Okay, now you say 10 meters set correctly. there. That should be a good place to start. Now I've got to get my three screws in that hold the meter in place. Of course one of them goes down through the clamp bracket so that's most important. Turn it 
two very short ones hold the meter down to the strap lug I think that's coupled, let's find out. No, it doesn't look like it is. Something's not sitting right. Let's remove those two small screws. Lift the meter slightly. Let it engage. Check that it's engaged. That's engaged. Okay. I'm just checking that that was engaged with the gear below, driven by the meter cord. It is now. The teeth can't have been meshed properly previously. Now I will set my film speed to something else and I'll go and test this on my calibrated light source. And find out how that meter reads. Now I need to put the top cover on for that so that that is masked correctly. Back shortly. Well that meter's reading low by about a stop so I'm just going to lift the two, take the two small screws out, lift my meter, rotate my aperture scale to where it should read correctly and put the meter back down again, in other words change its relative position and check to see what I've got. It should be there. So what I'll do is I'll get the meter set correctly at one light level and if the selenium cell is good it'll also read correctly at other light levels above and below that level. If the selenium cell is failing it will not read correctly at other light levels. It'll only read correctly where I've set it back shortly. Yeah that exposure seems to read well enough certainly within a stop or two either side of where I tested it so that's close enough for close enough for government work. Right this little window for our meter we'll need to put that in place so I'll clean that up come back put that in place. The lack of yellow paint on the top there I'll have to do something to uh, tidy that up too. Okay so far so good. Some yellow paint on the pointers for the meter indicator, the window back in at the top there all clean and looking good. Rewind back on, find the window nice and clean. That's the top of the camera dealt with. At the bottom of the camera I can't put the leatherettes back on immediately because I may have to make adjustments to the position of the reflex mirror. If the focus at the film plane and the image in the screen do not match. The image on the screen is not quite correct. I've checked the image at the focal plane, that's spot on. But the image on the screen when the lens is turned to infinity does not align for an infinity target. So I've got to move the rest position of the reflex mirror and that's done here. So I'm going to back off the lock screw and shift the mirror slightly if I can. And this involves a lot of toing and froing until you have things correct. 
So I may be making adjustments here. Content. I've just got this screw in here just so I've got something to hang on to. There would have been a fancy tool for that once upon a time, which I lack. That's all good, which means that it's leatherettes fitting time. But the leatherettes still look like this. So I've got a set to scrape all this old adhesive corrosion products and so forth off these leatherettes and get them ready to glue back. You don't need to watch that. This um, adhesive is really hard to get rid of. I've got to chip it off. It's thick, it's lumpy, uh, it's almost certainly what's contributed to the appearance of Zeiss bumps is the fact that the adhesive was probably put on in a very uneven layer and it was very thick and as it dried it just dried in the uh, in a, as a reflection of the uneven way it had been applied so instead of being a thin film it was just uh, slapped on like porridge Ideally I want to get this cleaned down till I can see the weave at the back here. That's that's ideal. But this stuff is a measurable thickness higher than that. And of course scraping at old leatherettes is a bit fraught because the leatherettes aren't that robust however this is just the first piece I'm tackling and it's probably the best of best uh, preserved of the leather it's this one here is going to be a real challenge well unfortunately one of the pieces of leatherette, as the saying goes, it never made it. It died on the operating table. So that will have to be replaced. And I'll start with that. It just, well you saw what it looked like before I started, it was lumpy and bumpy and it had a cracked appearance. Well it cracked. It cracked and pieces fell out. Pieces fell out and pieces disintegrated so there was nothing left to put back. If it had been not quite so bad I would have cut a patch into it to replace the missing piece. But the damage was just too general and it was never going to be a success. And so fortunately in my spares I had a piece of leatherette. Gotta get it all centered up correctly and tucked down in the corners in particular. It's always tricky getting leatherettes, the edges tucked down neatly. 
and centered top to bottom. That looks okay. Now I'll do this one. And this is the one from the camera. And it did clean up quite well. This was the side that the leatherette came off quite easily. It didn't have as much adhesive on there and it wasn't as thick and lumpy. As for the other side, the challenge is to get it tucked in all the way neatly around all the edges and corners. But that looks okay. I'll put the shutter release on there and put the patch on the shutter release. That's good. That leaves the base plate to be done. I'll remove the film advance lever. Here's the leatherette for the base plate, and this was in quite reasonable order. I'll deal with this by putting some adhesive onto my to a loose piece of paper there, and I'll transfer it across on a toothpick since I'm dealing with a lot of narrow strips of narrow bits here. They, Leather it on the basis base of the Reflex 3 is really chopped away to go around all the various features. Now the adhesive I'm using is relatively safe with this leatherette. Uh, if you had something with a uh, more MEK content, it would actually has the habit of melting the leatherettes, and that's not good. You never want to use something that's going to melt the leatherettes because even if you're careful and sparing and you only get the adhesive on the the rear surface and you don't get any on the front surface it'll come up through the cloth soften the plastic and as you handle the camera you'll be your fingers will be leaving indentations in the softened plastic 
I've seen it before. It um, makes for a real sorry mess. Well, that looks good. I'll get the advance lever back on and then we can put the leverette on the patch on the advance lever. I'm working against the clock because it's getting near the end of the day. Before too long it'll be beer o'clock and I won't be able to do any more work. The leatherette patch cleaned up fairly well too. Yeah, was this the camera where they Leatherette patch was not clocked to match the, the grain on the base of the camera. That might have been. Let's pop that on there. What does that leave on the body? Well, we've got our back catch cover to go on there. Here we have it armed and ready to fit. Yes, that works. All the leatherettes back on the camera, nice and tidy, ready to go. And this time, it's a proper working camera. It's even easier to set the frame counter. Right, that's it for now. I'm going to finish that lens. And I don't think I'll bother showing the strip down the lens because I've done them so many times. So I'll just show you once I've got the lens back on the camera and it's ready to send home and then that'll be it. Well the day is done. The lens has been serviced. Focus is adjusted. Everything looks really good. And this camera can now go back to its owner and I'm sure they'll be pleased to see it coming home. When it, the uh, stated problem when the camera arrived was that the camera was jammed and the main reason it was jammed was that the frame counter was at number one but it did need serviced the uh, shutter in particular was a problem area that was sticky didn't run right at all and the film advance was much too stiff in its operation usual suspects dried grease a little bit of dust stuff like that Anyway, there's our Retina Reflex 3, one of the earlier examples, slightly smaller selenium cell, meter setting button on the top of the top cover instead of on the back. Well there you go, thanks for watching.